Good morning. Good morning. Sound okay? Okay. Sunday. Good morning, everyone. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant is our pastor, Father Ed, along with our deacon, Lenny. Our mass intentions for today are for Anne Bygots, offered up by Anne de Giacomo, and also for Josephine Okowitz, offered up by Barbara and Tom Smaldor. Please silence all cell phones at this time. Thank you.
the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our brothers and sisters, today we begin the season of Advent. We open our hearts to God's love as we prepare to welcome Christ into our lives and homes. The candles of the Advent wreath remind us that Jesus Christ came to conquer the darkness of sin and lead us into the light of his glorious kingdom. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. And may the light of Christ lead you to the joy of his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds, we could not hope for it, such as they had not heard from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us up for our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We all work of your hands. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, Lord, make us turn to you let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon a cherubim, shine forth. Rouse your power, and come to save us. 
Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Let us make, turn to you, let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Then we, we no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge. As the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you are called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or to cock crow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch the gospel of the Lord. One sec, it's my mother. No, seriously. I got this email from my former director of the diaconate, who I worked under for six and a half years, and I wanted to share it with you for at Deacon Land. When we ponder the state of things in our country and the world, we may find things wrong, and we become frustrated and discouraged. However, in this holiday season of Advent, we have an opportunity to remember the blessings and offer our gratitude to God for all the good things he has given us. Let us resolve to be a light, to be a sign of hope to all that we encounter. May the Lord continue to bless you as you respond to his call. Deacon Leo McLean. He led us for six and a half years during the diaconate and always kept things real. And I thought that was appropriate for this first Sunday of Advent. The first Sunday of Advent, Advent already 
It seems like the cycle just keeps going faster and faster as they get older. And during Advent, we should take a personal spiritual inventory of ourselves. Who are we? What exactly do we love? What do we care about? What's important to us? As they get older, things change. The things that I see that are more important, those material things that I love as a 17 and 18 year old, I still like them, but they're not as important as they once were. And the older I get, the more I realize that the important thing is our relationship with Christ and how we become closer to him and have a closer relationship with him, a personal relationship with him. Every year around this time, we, we have this thing called Black Friday, right? This year it wasn't so big because of the, the pandemic. And we're online doing a lot of things. We see, I see people, relatives and friends and family, online ordering all these things for, for Christmas, for their relatives and for their friends. Those things used to be really important. Now I really don't care about the gifts as much. I care about that personal relationship with Christ. How many of these people who spend all those hours in the stores have the same enthusiasm, excitement, and dedication regarding our religious faith? Would they arrive at church at 4 a.m. if this was the only way to guarantee they get a seat at Mass? Would they camp out in the church parking lot so they could be the first one through the door? I don't think so. I don't think I'd get up at 4 a.m. either. We're all saddled with original sin, which means to one degree or another we focus our energies on meaningless things while I ignore the only meaningful thing, which is our Lord. We're not going to be perfect in this life, but maybe during Advent we can pause and evaluate our priorities. Maybe we can re redirect some of our enthusiasm, excitement, and dedication towards the God who created us and who loves us. Maybe if we take the time to think about it and pray about it, we can draw into closer communion with the Lord and be better prepared for his second coming, whenever that is. During this Advent, let's remember what really matters. It's not what you bought, but what you helped build. It's not what you learned, but what you taught. What will matter is every act of integrity, compassion, courage, kindness, or sacrifice that enriched, empowered, and encouraged others to live a better life. What will matter is not the confidence that we have, but our character. What will matter is not how many people we knew, but how many lives we touched by our kindness. What will matter is not your memories, but the memories of love that live on in others because of you. What will matter is how you will be remembered in the mind and the heart of God. That really is all that matters, how that God sees us, not how your neighbor sees us or the person next to you in the pew, but only thing that really matters is how God sees us, because we cannot fool him. And so we spend this first week of Advent waiting and listening to that small voice. When we pray, we try to listen to his, his voice. You may not recognize this man's name that I'm about to talk about, but all of you have heard about what he did for our country. He listened for that small voice. Before telling you about his act of courage, let me give you some background. He was a successful businessman in his late 30s, he and his wife, Dina, had two children, and they attended Mass every Sunday. He seemed destined for a peaceful life. Early in 2001, however, something happened. He had a strange dream or a premonition. He told his wife about it, saying he didn't know exactly what it meant, but it had something to do with the White House, and it would affect many people. He also told her that on account of the premonitions, he had started going to Mass every day during his lunch hour. Instead of eating lunch, he went to Mass. On September 11th, 
Tom Burnett's premonition became reality. Returning from a business trip, he boarded a plane headed for San Francisco. And on the flight were four young men filled with terrible bitterness. They took over the plane and redirected it towards Washington, D.C. Tom Burnett made quick phone calls to his wife. She told him what happened in New York. The plane was driven into the Twin Towers. Tom informed other passengers they were on a suicide flight. He spoke to his wife one more time. He told her they were going to storm the cockpit, but they were waiting until they were over a rural area. He then spoke these words. Do not worry, we are going to do something. You know the rest of the story. Led by Tom Burnett, a group of passengers stood up and took on the terrorists. From the flight recorder, we get some idea of the battle that took place before the plane went out of control. By their courage and sacrifice, Tom Burnett and those who joined him prevented the terrorists from crashing the plane into the White House. Tom listened to that small voice within him. Our Lord still speaks to us. He does. He still speaks to all of us if we listen. And we only have the faith of a mustard seed. All we have to do is listen, pray, and respond. In one of his last homilies, Pope John Paul said, to those who have been far away from the sacrament of reconciliation and forgiving love, I make this appeal, especially during this Advent. Come back to the source of grace. Do not be afraid of your sins. Christ himself is waiting for you. He will heal you, and you will be at peace. This is great advice for Advent. May Mary, the mother of God, intercede for all of us, and may we all, through her, be baptized in the Holy Spirit. If we consecrate our family to her, she will enter into that family and immediately look after the children. After you pray your rosary, or even if you don't pray your rosary, hold it up. If you're worried about your children, your parents, your grandchildren, your friends, yourself and say I bind the souls and then name those people to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus and watch how she protects them. Watch how she looks after them. As I've said many times, if you knew how much she loves you, you would cry tears of joy. Those people will become hers. She will enter into your family. Let us listen the main message of Advent is fairly basic. Get ready, get serious, get excited, and maybe this year will be a little bit different than previous years. We will fill our hearts with joy rather than emptying our bank accounts of money. And that would be a nice new holiday tradition, wouldn't it? Amen. Please stand and have a feed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. Let us spend for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord calls us to be watchful and to be alert. We do not know when he'll return, so we turn to him in prayer for the needs of our world. Our response is, be born in us, be born in our world. For the church, that we may be signs of Christ's ongoing presence by the witnessing on behalf of all who suffer injustice. For the desire to reject hatred, pessimism, and fear by demonstrating love, hope, and compassion for all people, especially those who make us uncomfortable, we pray. For all the nations of the world, that there may be unity where there is division, dialogue where there is misunderstanding, generosity where there is self-interest, and let us pray for the safety of our troops, our first responders, and essential workers, we pray. For those struggling to focus on the deeper meaning of this season, for the gift of quiet reflection in the midst of constant distractions, and for desire to enter into this pre-holiday season in new and different ways, we pray. For those whose view of the future is dark, fearful, or discouraging, for the many needs of this community and those to whom we show care, for the determination to teach our children the real gifts of kindness, generosity, and regard for those who are different from us, we pray. For the sick and the eradication of the coronavirus, and for those who have died, especially Anne Magat and Josephine Oklowitz, who are being remembered during this Mass, as well as those who grieve them. Also, please remember those who died recently. We pray. Loving God, bless all our families and the children to you. you. Give them wisdom and strength when they face difficulties and fill their homes with joy. Help us to reach out to them in love and concern and to embrace them fully in our parish community. Accept this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. I do have a few announcements this morning. St. Thomas 2021 calendar raffles are here. 90 chances to win for just $20 a ticket. You may purchase these at the parish office Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. They make great gifts for Christmas. Our Advent giving tree has been set up. Detailed instructions are located in the bulletin. Please note that our procedure for donating has been changed. The tree with tags is for seniors without families, donations only. If you wish to donate to Brigantine children in need, please follow the instructions listed in the bulletin. Reminder, you can also find our bulletin online at our church website, which is stthomasbrigantine.org. Please take a complimentary 2021 calendar. They're located at all entrances and exits of the church. Grab one before they're gone. Also, the Knights of Columbus will be sponsoring a Red Cross blood drive. That will be held next Saturday, December 5th, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. To donate, you must call for an appointment. That number is in the bulletin. The goal for the Knights of Columbus is always 25 pints every time they have a drive. And we've been going over that, which is so great, so wonderful, that you're willing to help those that need blood. Thank you.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, is to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed his first coming, the loveliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels and thrones, dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the cloth of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partake in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, Though the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. For well, Jesus Christ said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.